Next speaker is uh, Olga Kudis. She will talk about communication through acemic writing. Um, back in the early days of uh, Fuse, I once had this uh, conversation with uh, Brody and Wozencroft and saying, yeah, but if you can't read it, are you still communicating? I said, like, well, if you listen to free jazz, is it still music? So I'm really curious to find out what Olga has to say about this. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I would like to uh, start with the statement that my uh, regular handwriting is uh, really bad. Uh, so if you have the same, uh, I will try to make you sure that you can turn it into the art project. And uh, those of you who have uh, beautiful handwriting, so uh, I hope you will also find some kind of inspiration in this project or maybe some uh, space for reflection or discuss discussion. Uh, so basically, uh, this is how the project looked. I did it uh, during my pan, uh, during uh, not my, but uh, pandemic years. Um, that's why everybody is in masks. Um, and this is my teachers, and um, they test this um, installation. Uh, I'm, I'm saying a semi writing, but I consider that uh, it might be not uh, in. Um, uh, in use very much. Um, basically, it's asemic writing. I learned about this term from uh, asemic magazine by visual poet Tim Gaze, and uh, later on in a book of Peter Schwenger, which calls uh, uh, the art of asemic writing, the art of writing. And uh, I, I was, uh, I like the idea uh, to communicate some message uh, with not a literal writing as we used to, but with something more abstract, so you can pay attention to the shape and the emotions. Uh, uh, so uh, the, the title of the work uh, is Empathy. And uh, I, I was uh, honestly, uh, I was shocked how many uh, works I found on the internet, how many people um, decided to do uh, works in this asemic writing. So asemic without semantic meaning, yeah? But you still put a meaning of emotions there. And a lot of people, visual poets, designers, artists, uh, both uh, amateur and professional, uh, they work, uh, they do some kind of or imitate the writing by repeating the patterns we well know, like for example, lines and the gestures by hands. So um, yeah, this all about uh, also uh, putting additional sense to something you couldn't write, but you still need somehow to understand what is the story behind this. So it's not totally, it, it's not totally doesn't have the sense, but it doesn't have the sense as we get used to see in our writing. And uh, still, uh, there is when there is no uh, when you when it's unreadable, there is still a lot of information you can extract from the writing. Uh, for example, uh, this one I found in my old notebook. Um, I was um, when I was a student, I, I used some uh, notebooks for making notes during the lecture. I couldn't spot what exactly happened during this uh, time or during this lecture, but I, I totally see that I was. Uh, um, stressed, I, it, it's aggression, that's how what I do uh, when I'm frustrated, but I cannot tell it or I disagree, you know, I started to do some angry scribbles in my notebook, so th that's how you can spot, you don't know what, what is here, but you can definitely see that I, I was not uh, happy this moment. And this is the actual work, and uh, it, that's how it was uh, uh, prototyped, and you can see there was additional layer. Uh, I couldn't uh, show you during uh, the presentation because it was installed uh, as a huge uh, set of uh, book scrolls. Mm, but basically, uh, it was I used conductive materials uh, connected to it uh, to connect to computer and uh, hardware and the software. So when you touch the works, mm, the sound was played, and the sound was also concrete. Um, it's related to um, uh, very much to our communication process. While we are not just writing something, when we talk to each other, we use our voice, we use our intonations. So that's, that was a reflection of that in this work. And the third thing, um, it was a gesture, yeah? So uh, how you run the sound, you touch the work and the sound plays. 
and the gesture, uh, it's not uh, just the gesture of writing thing, but um, for me, empathy is when uh, the friend tell me the story and uh, I want to say I'm here, but I don't always, uh, I, I'm not always can uh, put it in write nice, write nice words. Uh, so I basically touch the shoulder of a person to say, hey, I'm here, I understand you totally. So um, that was a gesture of touching, subtle touching, and you hear the sound, so uh, the installation talks back to you. And in the middle, that was my uh, naive uh, prototype, uh, real life first one, that's how I imagined the work look like. And the, the uh, re uh, real one, it's at my academy, Polish-Japanese uh, one in a building, so it's each book, it's uh, more than four meters long, mm, but it's uh, quite narrow. Uh, so I, uh, I did it a uh, real scale, but then I scan the pieces to edit it a bit in, uh, in um, uh, Photoshop. And this, uh, that was not the first, um, actually, um, that was not the first uh, sketch. Uh, this was the first one. And uh, you can see that I was heavily inspired by undeciphered uh, systems. It's wrong, wrong, a piece of wrong, wrong uh, script, if we could call it like this. And I was, um, um, I like the shapes very much and how they uh, they combined together. So I thought maybe, uh, if I, I still imagine that the book will be interesting interactive and contains sounds, but I thought about this form of the regular book we get used to, because I like this, uh, but then I started to try to find out another thing, and that scrolls come up to my mind, because you can read them, you know, uh, as a segments, but also you can see them at the whole at a time. And uh, the second one, uh, I started, I, I was uh, very much um, stressed that time and I was, uh, I feel the pressure uh, because I have to deliver the good work and I don't know what I'm doing. So I started from imitation. It's, uh, you can spot Henri Micho here and he's uh, dancing uh, letters, he's uh, dancing symbols. Um, this, that's what I try to repeat uh, when I saw, I know this work and I know many people know this. So that, that's what I try. I look at this work and I think, oh, this was a, a great idea, you know, to imagine some signs as people dancing and that's how you can show the movement. So, so I started randomly to do it, um, but it was just for the purpose of understanding which way should I go. Yeah, we often try to imitate great masters uh, on some stage to um, maybe extract something from it. And the next thing, uh, it was done during the workshop uh, with a broad in orange founder. I, I took a lot from here. He taught us uh, how to use Coca-Cola Cola pen. Uh, he literally makes um, a calligraphy pen from a Coca-Cola can. Yeah, so uh, that was another idea that I think, oh, so you can let yourself free and use uh, different materials, you know, which are not supposed to be there. Mm, so, uh, and the next thing, next step is experimenting. Yeah, I burned uh, paper, I crushed it and I glued it together. So do everything. Basically, you need a few materials to uh, do it. I, I had ink, water, paper, and uh, get crazy with them, but don't burn too much at home. It will smell a lot, so uh, better open space. Checked on my flat two days minimum. Uh, the smell was awful, like burning. Uh, yeah, but the pattern, it was amazing. And uh, during the work uh, on this project, um, I um, extracted three main things uh, which I want to make points on. Um, three main things which we use on a daily basis while we communicate, uh, like I'm standing in front of you and I communicate it to you with my voice, and you might make notes or, um, I don't know, pictures, let's imagine that you write down, um, and the third thing, you can, uh, I gesticulate a lot, yeah, so I wanted to say maybe I'm too expressive, or I'm excited about uh, talking to you today, and you might make some gestures like this, or tired, or you are excited, so this three things, first, is writing itself. Um, the most challenging was uh, to um, uh, unplug the hand from the thinking process. While we all know uh, the common patterns of our different alphabets, different scripts we use, uh, how you can write without thinking about this, uh, like you already know it, yeah? 
Um, so that was the most challenging thing, uh, try to do something without overthinking, but still remembering uh, not to do totally random stuff. Um, so you need to remember about composition or keep in mind initial idea, how you generally want to look at light, dark, or what the combination of strokes you would like to use. And the second thing is a gesture. And I could interpret it in a few ways. Uh, first is a, a gesture of writing itself. Yeah, when your hand is moving and you, uh, the science appears uh, from your hand. And the second one, as I told, the gesture when you touch someone delicately. This is perf my personal way of communicating to someone. Uh, I, I, I try to, you know, touch like a shoulder, like, hey, yeah, I, I support you. I understand you yeah this is my empathy so I'm here with you and technically basically it runs the sound in this case because uh, the layer um, I put a layer of conductive material under the um, under the paper so in between the papers so it's still very thin but it conducts your um, your um, uh, the movement and your touch to the program to run the sound and the third one, sound and self, uh, uh, intonations, our tone, uh, people can spot easily, especially when they know you, that uh, your mood is changing, you're uh, happy or sad or something else. And, and this is uh, Bartosz on the picture. Uh, this is a composer who wrote uh, sounds, uh, concrete sounds for me. He did an amazing job. This is when we were testing this um, works. Uh, yeah, we, in masks it was a still pandemic, but he was totally uh, um, happy about how it works. And he also programmed it, not just wrote the sounds, uh, we pre-recorded my voice, so he uses the pieces of it, like very concrete, uh, concrete poetry stuff. And he also program, programmed it. Uh, so the sound changed depending on uh, how many works are touched. Because each of the work, and I will show you later, dedicated to specific feeling, we want to make, um, we want to show that we usually don't feel something one at a time. It's very hard to um, divide it, like I, I am just angry and that's it, yeah? I can feel love to someone and I can be happy about that, or I can be angry about it, and I can cry at the same moment. So basically all the feelings mixed. And that's what we want to reflect. Um, so um, when it comes to sketching, uh, they are very, uh, yeah, that's how they look. Um, my handwriting is a bit better, <laughs> but, but just a bit. So, um, uh, and the first thing, it, uh, it was about the objects. Uh, I, I found this idea nice, but I didn't use it finally. Um, I, I was locked at home for some days and uh, I started to see what the objects I have in my room. And I think one object, it's a good idea to make a system of something. You can rotate the subject and write the shapes from uh, the different angles so you can don't you cannot recognize the object in the shapes but you still have only one object yeah and uh, I didn't use it here but but later on I used it with my uh, students and I will show you and the next thing it was patterns mm, it, it, it was a bit more natural to work with patterns for me as ink and water uh, and fire uh, and oil a bit of oil you can see on the top how oil with ink works. They don't mix, but then they create something. So um, uh, the, the, they did a lot of job by itself. Yeah, you just help them uh, to work with it. And this is how my flat looks like. I use all the space I have. Uh, in this case of the long works, corridor and the bathroom <laughs> were the mostly occupied and they helped me a lot. Uh, so I found out that you can uh, stick uh, wet pieces of paper on your bathroom. Um, uh, walls and it works perfectly and then you work with it but uh, some of the ink is state it never comes out so every time I, I see it I reflect on the idea that I, I did something here yeah and this is not my flat so my um, my um, the person whom I ran from he didn't see it yet and this next thing is tools. And once my uh, drawing paint, painting teacher, he told me that um, if the tool you are working with uh, resists you, um, you need to find a better solution. You need to find another tool. 
And I love this suggestion. I uh, use it in many aspects of my life. But in this case, I try to find the most uh, resistant thing um, to get a new ideas, to get a new strokes, and new something which remains letters, but not exactly letters. So in this case, I, I tried everything. This is a straw. Um, I know it's physics. It, it has empty space inside. So of course, it keeps the ink. Yeah, you can. But, but it's not very natural that you see the straw and you think, oh, that's what I will write with. Um, but but uh, the most resistant tool I found out to get the vibrant light is my right hand. I'm left-handed, so the right hand resists me a lot, uh, but I use it uh, in this case. So this is a final set, uh, some fragments, and the full length works. Um, and I fastly will go one by one. Uh, so the, this is aggression, and you can see how uh, sharp it is, how uh, it's burned, yes, yeah? so this is a fragment and this is full work. And they were printed finally, but first they made uh, by hands, by ink. So uh, this, is, uh, um, this is sharp edges ink, this is aggression, something you are stressed about, so you, uh, you hate it. I, I push myself on, on a, once uh, w what I would like to tell, that every time I did each work, I push myself to think about specific story. Uh, so basically, uh, these pieces, they contain uh, my specific stories. B but of course you cannot read them, uh, but every time imagine that there is something I felt at that moment and I evoke it in my head again, uh, so there is a, a story behind it, yeah, it's not totally random, but then I found a solution on how to express it to the viewers, so you, the viewers, uh, could um, um, feel some kind of empathy for me, or uh, uh, it can evoke your own story when you was, uh, even you had this feeling and the next thing is love. I imagine it as a dialogue. In my case, it was a dialogue. Every time you tell it, come back, these feelings, you know, it's a battle sometimes. Sometimes it's a more calm. But the end of the story, uh, so it uh, reminds, it stays, it's on you, what you imagine is happening then. And the next one is inspiration. For me, it's something expressive. So I use the dynamic symbols uh, to show it and kind of enlightenment. Oh, sorry, uh, I am too expressive yet. So this is a moment of inspiration. Uh, and um, th that's how it looks uh, for me. And this is serenity. Uh, I lose a lot of white space. You, you can still claim that it's not calm, but uh, this is my maximum, I think. I, I'm never calm 100%, so for me it's uh, my serenity. And this one is doubts. It's very heavy. Uh, so when you have it, uh, they, they follow you, you know, they push you, so they don't leave you any kind of space uh, for uh, something else. And this is a despair. It's very dark, and when it go down, like it feels like you're falling down, and you don't see any exit. So even your writing remains unreadable, and it's not seen as goals. Uh, but, but thanks to the team and my teachers, they pulled me out from my despair and the work finally was displayed um, and they, they tested it and they were excited to listen to it, you know. And now I would like to show the video. Um, I am on the screen if it's possible. Uh, yeah, I guess it's a signal. <laughs> It has a sound.
Okay, and then uh, presentation again, yeah. No? Yeah, and uh, that uh, that was a short documentation. Uh, we use one of the sound which uh, from which Bartosz created, and, but basically they were uh, more, and some of them were very disturbing, especially for a despair. Uh, yeah, it, it was very like uh, stressful. And, and I want to end uh, my presentation with something uh, I'm very proud of. Um, it's my uh, works of my students. So remember, I told you that the idea of the objects, uh, which I didn't use, but finally we use it with students uh, on the second year, uh, of course, communication design, which I lead. Um, and uh, the task, they have an uh, imaginary script. Uh, before they create the script, they need to, they are obliged to basically to, um, to decide on the object or a character who is using this script. And this is their concept, which we, they need to elaborate. It's not about the shapes, uh, uh, it's about the shapes uh, and the system, but it's about the concept for whom. And you see the four works in progress of many of my students, and they all works are great. Um, and you see they use objects as sticks from the wood. Uh, he, the student decided that it's a caveman, and we said like, hey, caveman, they, they already use something, you know why they should use sticks. But they, okay, this is just a guy who lives in the forest. Good. So, and the, um, the mosaic script, uh, the uh, student, she had a great idea of the um, people who lost everything uh, during the war, and she said like how they, um, sorry, uh, how they um, uh, created life again from the pieces, you know, like a mosaic, but then she decided that it, she is not uh, uh, too good to uh, raise this topic. And I said, you are always good, you know, you just, you have a lot of students who uh, experienced the war, you just need to talk to them and I'm sure they will be happy if you raise this topic. And um, the potato script, for example, uh, the student, she said that she got an idea and uh, when she was in a McDonald's sitting, uh, French fries, and she said, "Like, um, I wonder how potatoes would communicate if they had a, their own script." And so um, she came home and she made the stems from potatoes, and then she outlined it. Uh, so now I'm sure that um, if potatoes could write to each other, now you know how uh, their letters could look like. Thank you. I still have a few minutes and uh, I uh, brought uh, some books because that's what I love to do and I bound them uh, by myself at a tiny version of my project. I had some, um, so uh, please uh, who wish to have a piece of this work and reflect at home on it, uh, please come and I will uh, be happy uh, so you keep it.